what would you think if you took in, an auto level out and look through the scope and say 25, say 30 miles away, you still had a, a obviously a water horizon, but the auto level scope is below the water horizon. What would you think of that? I doubt that it ever would be. It is, well, about five, six foot it was, actually. Well, then. So did everybody understand that? He's asking George, you know, and Rumpus. Basically, he addressed it to George, but Rumpus was the one giving a presentation. Uh, what would he say if uh, if the crosshairs of the of his instrument were below the water? Okay, so what he's going to point out here is that the water is blocking Strong's knob. Okay, so they're looking at it through uh, with cameras, I guess, whatever. So they get the auto level, and instead of uh, like it being earth curve. It's the water being, the uh, being. It's above the the horizontal. Okay, so in other words, it's being refracted upwards, blocking Strong's knob in the background. Rumpus won't accept this. Okay, now this video is uh is for the purpose of I've been calling Rumpus a lying sack of shit. Now if he hears this and confronts it i'll apologize and i mean not with some bullshit explanation if he admits that he was mistaken and humbles himself you know like a decent man a humble man then i'll apologize for calling him a lying sack of shit if he tries giving some bullshit explanation but uh so tim osman and uh goes out there with jesse kozlowski you know and they this is what they get all day long and uh so he so he tells this to Rumpus and Rumpus just goes off on his own tangent like he's talking like he's talking about seeing th these conditions are making him see his own ass through a telescope even though the water is the same temperature as the air it's it's his desperation it's his brain just blocking what he's hearing but I want to make sure everybody else understands this important point and then he shows his model and he does not refract the horizon. He's saying that he always included the horizon refracting. He he goes as far as even to acknowledge uh, the horizontal is not lining up. And they correct him, and he just still shows a model and everything with uh, light rays bending up and down and around the earth, but not the horizon bending. Never discusses it. So this is, like I said calling out rump as the lion's like a shit or a humble man who was mistaken we'll see you have obvious some refraction going on or or your auto level compensator wasn't free to move it might have been hung up the auto level actually i took it back to the uh place and got them to test it right there and they said it was it was on plus we did test no, that's it. fine but during your use in your setup if you didn't have it properly leveled uh the compensator would get hung up you have to have the base within being within level to the earth within a couple degrees before the compensator releases well, I, I would have to yeah. expect that george uh, that uh, jesse knows how to use those and well if jesse did it yeah if yeah. jesse did it then i would not question it at all no. yeah it was below we're looking at um we're looking 37 miles away at uh strong's knob but it was below the well uh, then i'd say you obviously level. have some refraction effects occurring sorry, the that'd be looming yeah. I'm confused. If, if there's something, is it, you're saying, sorry, you're saying the horizon is below the horizontal, which is what you'd expect. The uh, no, he said the crosshairs of the yeah. auto level was below the horizon. Oh right. Oh okay. Sorry. Right. Okay, that is a bit weird. Yes, yeah, okay. it threw us off completely. So I personally don't like to use auto. So so that's weird. So he never heard of that, right? Never heard of the horizon not lining up with the horizontal. Okay. Well, I thought you. Uh, always refracted the horizon rumpus but even after hearing that he don't acknowledge the consequences of the statement levels uh well, not over that distance yeah I mean, yeah you can't use an auto level over 20 some miles no but well it just means there's refraction well, well why not well you could say yeah say, wait, i mean on a with no refraction, sure with no refraction you can i mean you're just a the optics are susceptible to refraction effects just like any laser or anything else you have.
I mean, I, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's really weird to me that to think that you're six foot off the water or so, and that you can have a level scope and look through the scope, and basically, the Great Salt Lake has been, you know, loomed up uh, a good amount. I mean, it, it really doesn't make sense to to my mind, truthfully. Well, that's well, the reality of it. If that's what you saw, yeah. Yep, it's the only thing I can think of, really. You have to trust your instruments, just like a pilot uh, trusting his instrumentation in the clouds. Is if the auto level is properly leveled and the compensator is free, you know those crosshairs are dead nuts on as to being sighting a tangent out. You got to believe it. Yeah, well, I mean, living does happen. Yes, I mean, the conditions, for instance, um, that Anthony Riley got when he did his Isle of Man observation, that um, the one about a year ago now. So he got Rumpus super thinks he's talking I call about, it, which means that indeed you're. Rumpus thinks he's talking about uh, like everything looming up. Okay, and Tim's gonna correct him, but Rumpus just won't. His brain won't accept it. He's like, I got it. He's like, well, what do you expect this to be? And I said, well, you know what? It should not be below the water level, and so it should not be below the water level, and so we set it up, and right. bam, he's like, what the heck? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's obvious. And uh, he's confused. Universal, could you just click on the? It threw it threw my mind for a loop because obviously we do Ah. tests looking at Strong's knob, and uh, you know when you're near the ground, you can't see barely barely any of it, but you can go a couple hundred feet up uh, towards Buffalo Point or with a drone and start to see more and more of it, but. you know, if it's if it's looming up, if the water's looming up, uh, and it's covering part of the the mountain, like it, it threw me for a loop, really. Mm. Yeah, well, this is exactly the same. That uh, that okay. the. Uh, so does does everybody understand that? So the water's looming up, blocking Strong's knob. Okay. I mean, is, I don't know if anybody can think of some other shit that he's saying. But uh, it's crystal clear. He mentions it a couple other ways of putting it. This is the clearest way that the water's looming up, blocking Strong's knob. Okay? Not through a camera, through an instrument, an auto level. Okay? So, in other words, he's seen shit through cameras and seen what he thought was uh, earth curve um, blockage. You know? um, And then he takes it where he usually you know where he flies his drone and and puts his camera and puts an auto level on it and sees that it's not the shit dropping down in the distance it's the water raising up in the foreground okay so it, that's why he said it threw him for a loop so i'm sure everybody understands it except rumpus of course this dip shit don't understand it his brain won't even let him 100 feet up uh, towards Buffalo Point or with a drone and start to see more and more of it. But, um, you know, if it's if it's looming up, if the water's looming up uh, and it's covering part of the, the mountain, like it, it threw me for a loop, really. Yeah, well, this is exactly the same that, uh, that uh, Anthony Riley got in his observation, his video that he did. Um, we worked out with Philip and uh, with the uh, refraction model we had. We had exactly that effect. And, then, and, and, and as um, he was, um, Anthony Wright was, that's the observation about a year ago, and he, um, these highly compressed results, the Isle of Man became very compressed, but it was loomed hugely up. Um, and in what? the modeling, the refraction modeling we've been doing, that does indeed happen. So I'm calling it super looming. Yeah, I mean, you could always go back to Strong Snob on different uh, atmospheric and so this is where Rumpus, uh, that's his super looming is, is uh, see his own ass in a telescope uh, looming. So we'll see, we'll see what he does. Keywords here, I'll be speaking with Jesse later today, and I'll ask him about that. Uh, yeah, just ask him about the auto level next to the, uh, next to the water. Okay. All yeah, right. well, no. now, whenever I use the auto level, I'm typically up about 12 feet up above the water. Well, we did. We obviously used it all throughout. But what was funny is, like, the last thing we did was go sure. uh, near the water. And yeah, it was I like, it. He, he's like, well, what do you expect this to be? And I said, well, you know what? It should not be 
below the water level. And so we set it up, and right. bam, he was like, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it, yeah, so what they're talking about is the crosshairs of the auto level. So wherever the crosshairs is, is what exactly where that scope is level with. So they would expect to see about five foot above the horizon, right? And this is uh, Tim Osmond out there with Jesse. And, you know, it's funny how Jesse Kozlowski, the surveyor himself, doesn't disclose this information. So he asks what he's supposed to see, and he's like, you know, well, we're not supposed to see. So if they're seeing blockage or obstruction, so so he asks him what he's going to see, and he's not supposed to see the water or the horizon up above the crosshairs. That means the water is looming up, blocking the shit in the background, which is very common, which is what they mistake for curvature. Honestly, it, 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 threw, it threw my mind for a loop because obviously we do oh. tests looking at Strong's knob. And, uh, you know, when you're near the ground, you can't see barely, barely any of it, but you can go a couple hundred feet up uh, towards Buffalo Point or with a drone and start to see more and more of it. But... Um, you know, if it's if it's looming up, if the water's looming up, uh, and it's covering part of the the mountain, like it, it threw me for a loop, really. Yeah, well, this is exactly the same that uh, that uh, Anthony Riley got in his observation, his video that he did. Um, we worked out with Philip and uh, with the uh, refraction model we had. We had exactly that effect. And then, and and, and, and as um, the, he was uh, and that and that and that and that. It's funny. But um, Rumpus is just, he ain't getting it. He ain't getting it. He ain't understanding that the looming Tim's talking about is the horizon being loomed up, blocking Strong's knob. He just really ain't getting it. But uh, listen to him come to to realization in, uh, over, the, over the next couple minutes. Just, you got to hear it. Um, Anthony Ryan was it? That's the observation about a year ago, and he um, the highly compressed result. The Isle of Man became very compressed, but it was loomed hugely up. Um, and in the modeling, the refraction modeling we've been doing that. So compression and looming at the same time, huh? Actually. Tim was Tim was it? Um, was the air a lot warmer than the ground? So did you have something like no sun? Um, a cold ground and warm air, that would do it. No, um, why, you know, Great Salt Lake is very unique in that uh, the water level, or the water is very, very uh, shallow, so the water... No, but nice try, Rumpus. Nice try, but um, he's still really not getting it. It's the, uh, the horizon looming up. He ain't getting it, but he will. And uh, I mean, he's starting to, but it's funny listening to Rumpus comes you know reality catching up with him it's funny how he takes it in but you're gonna like this just stay with me uh, this well, okay did you did you have a load of warm air come in from somewhere else that came over as a, as a front or something a warm front that came over that was therefore the air was much warmer than the ground possibly I, I have well, no that idea. Would have the same, that would have the same. You, um, George gets this. So which is it, Tim? He just said that the air and the water were the same temperature, but uh, possibly a warm air coming in. But uh, listen to Rumpus, man. This is it. This is one of the key ones. Time, for instance, when he has cold with his cold ice, and then you get a warm air coming over it, that will do it. I mean, this is what happens in the. Um, uh, this is what happens uh, when the uh, when you the egg the. Uh, you get light. You get having the same radius of curvature as the Earth. In the, um, I, I that, don't that, would the same, that would have the same. You, um, George gets this sometimes. For instance, when he has cold with his cold ice, and then you get a warm air coming over it. That will do it. I mean, this is what happens in the. Um, uh, this is what happens uh, when the uh, when you the egg. The, uh, you get light. You get having the same radius of curvature as the Earth, and this is when you could see effect. You know, if you if it carried on, you could see your own bottom. This is the classic scenario. So look, he's for one, he's talking about seeing your own bottom. There's so much refraction, you could see all the way around the globe if it was clear enough. But he's still don't. He's talking about. So he's talking about the warm air coming in and making it where it appears flat. He still ain't getting it, folks. Tim is sitting here telling him 
that it's the ground, the water looming up, blocking the mountain, blocking Strong's knob. Okay, he he uh, he fell back in to his sleep, but you'll hear him wake up. But he's in denial when he wakes up. So he's comparing the the warm air, possibly warm air, coming in, saying that he could see your own butt through a telescope due to refraction. But he's backwards. He but listen to reality sink in for him. This is the classic scenario, and this is a thing that George has had it's sufficient refraction that he's had looming sufficient to do that. So he's experienced exactly the same thing. But well, I, I didn't realize this. Uh, uh, Rumpus, I was just looking up the stats on the Great Salt Lake. It's a very shallow lake. The average depth is only 16 feet, and the max depth is 33 feet. Wow. I I didn't even know that um, because when you look from the Antelope Island Causeway to Great Salt Lake, like that uh, bit of water, some of it's it's kind of been divvied up a little bit. They, they put like a railroad track in and messed it up and then had to join the waters together and stuff. But when you look over that piece of water, that's only like five inches the whole way. Wow. I've never seen it that deep anywhere so he never seen it that deep so this this basically reminds me of a uh, of the blackpool swan okay because they spoke of uh i think they spoke of uh it being shallow like it, there's not always even water there so tim says it's pretty much like five inches the whole way across and uh george pointed out that there is a spot that's 16 foot and the maximum 33 feet so it's a really shallow lake so and uh but i had to point that out it's like like the black is exactly like the black pool swan so they got the the uh the image the photograph whatnot but they don't have an auto level to see where the crosshairs fall on the black pool swan i'd be very interested if somebody has access to that area and an auto level if bev hears this Go out there with auto level, and I bet you, when on days like that, it's very common um, that the crosshairs will be just under the horizon, and Rumpus is is it's about to sink in. <laughs> Watch. I've never seen it that deep anywhere. Uh, yeah. Several feet. I've never seen several feet. Well, deep. maybe way out in the middle and yeah, in the lake, the yeah. outer. But George, when you did your, you experienced your super looming things. When you had those things, um, right, the things looming up, then you would have found that your, the surface would have been above your horizontal. Oh, it'd be all over the map. It'd yeah, change exactly. So, so from when minute you said, to minute. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So my point is, you personally have experienced these conditions with a properly set. So now George is having no pr trouble at all saying that the, the horizontal is all over the place. Changes in a minute. But they use refraction to, I mean, they use, yeah, they use the, uh, the theodolites and auto levels to judge how much refraction it is. So they, however much they need to complete their model, then that's what they say the refraction is for the day. And uh, I'll, I'll play a clip of, of him saying just that, which makes the model unfalsifiable, which makes the model bullshit, in my opinion. conditions with a properly set up field light where the surface features of something that should be oh, yeah. in, in, in is fact, above the horizontal which yeah, is exactly what Tim was saying he's seen it, he was confused at, by it. But, but I'm saying you've experienced it personally yourself as well yeah I mean if you look at some of my latest uh, one of my latest videos listen to him try and twist Tim's words saying that there's things above the horizontal no Tim's saying the horizontal is above the fucking the eye level crosshairs he's trying like hell to suppress this shit oh he's trying like hell his brain's fighting it's fighting to accept what he's heard you know from reputable jesse and tim you know reputable sources you look at some of my latest uh, one of my latest videos where i'm talking about friends and island and the channel marker there that's at two point seven two miles away exactly uh, i have experienced where I, I can see the ice looking out uh, so, in, so in the crosshairs at the crosshairs. Right. Where so, normally so, I see sky, 
in the whole. I, I see land right. mass so, passing past. So why were you expressing? Uh, why were you expressing uh, not quite disbelief at Tim, but you were saying you couldn't. You thought it was a uh, setup problem when. No, I you, didn't. I, I didn't. I uh, said it could possibly have been that, but after he told me it was twenty some miles, I said, "Yeah, it's probably maybe some X occurring." Yeah, which you've experienced. Yes, that, that which, gives which, a lot of room for that stuff to happen too. Yeah, which I you have experienced yourself, George. Yeah. That's my point. Say what? Yeah, you, you have experienced just what Tim's described. Yes, Rumpus. Yes. How many times has he got to tell you? He described it, then he confirmed it. Now he's got to reconfirm it. Yes, Rumpus. A lot of room for that stuff to happen, too. Yeah, which you have experienced yourself, George. That's my point. Say what? Yeah. You, you have experienced just what Tim's described. Yes, I just said I months. did. I, I right. can, okay. be, I can set to... up and I can see, especially near sunset, I can see the land yes. masses and the ice rising up and even passing past the crosshairs in the center of the lens. Yeah, in fact, I've actually got a gra- I've actually got a graph um, of a, a paper. Rumpus's brain will not let him deal with reality. He still thinks it's shit coming up above the horizon. People, he even shows a graph to show it. But he's a fucking moron. He's going to show a graph showing the refraction, but the horizon's just sitting there. Doesn't show the horizon doing nothing at all. Okay, because he didn't even consider that back then. He won't admit it because he's a lying sack of shit. But uh, and also, he, uh, George is talking about uh, toward the evening time he gets that effect. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the Blackpool Swan is uh is closer to the evening. Um, so you got a lot of a lot of things similar there. You got the um the shallow water. The, um, the same time of day, predominantly. But listen to this dance. This is when I finally get around to making a presentation of people who did this over a period of a day, which confirms George's, um, and that actually shows the curvature of the what's called the K value, uh, which would make it, whether it's looming. And, and this, in fact, described it when uh, Chris was sort of poo-pooing my super looming term. But they've, they've got this uh, ex- just, scientific well, thing. You know, don't get me wrong. I mean, when Tim first mentioned that, the first thing that came to mind is whether or not the auto level compensator was hung up. But as more information came out, as he revealed more information, then it became obvious that it's probably more of an atmospheric thing than anything having to do with any auto level setup. You got any well, presentation to yeah. the rumpus world? Uh. The light is effectively doing this. So where they had a curvature of 10, minus 10, uh, which would put the curvature, sorry, what was that? Okay. So with the air in the water, the same temperature, you're going to get a super looming effect. Yeah, right, dude. Please use some common sense just once in your life, Rumpus. Please. Okay? I know you don't want to accept this, okay? You, if you listen back to this video, you're going to see that they're telling you something opposite of what you're acknowledging. And they're not even calling you out on it. Which... They probably ain't got much common sense either. Or they're just thinking about what they're going to say, which I can understand. But somebody should point out. So nobody did. So I'm pointing it out, Rumpus. They're talking about the ground looming up, blocking shit in the background. Okay? Not seeing your own ass through a telescope, bro. Okay? And look at your refraction model. Don't be a lying sack of shit. Your refraction model right there does not show the horizon refracting either way. It shows... The rays bending up above the horizon or bending down around the horizon. Okay? So be honest. Be humble. Show me you're a decent man. Okay? You don't always got to be right. Okay? Fess up and um, show me you're a, a decent man and can accept obvious truths. You know, or accept when you made a mistake, man. We all have to sometimes, Rumpus. You're no different. Which would put it right here. So the light, if you can see this, between, I've got 16 and 4 on here, the curvature of the light would be in there, which means that light coming from all the way down here is actually curving more 
um, with a smaller radius than the Earth um, would then loom up. So you'd be able to see stuff loomed up enormously. But I'll, I'll deal with this in my present. But the point is, uh, it's an established scientific fact. That, so he's talking about things looming up further. They're talking about the horizon looming up, blocking shit in the background. He's talking about seeing your own ass in a telescope. He's a lying sack of shit, or either just retarded, or both. I, you know, lacking common sense. I'd like to think. But if he acknowledges this, I will apologize for calling him a lying sack of shit. If he acknowledges that he didn't understand what they were saying, and that his model doesn't reflect the horizon moving around, it didn't at that point, at least. The um, uh, be able to see stuff loomed up enormously but I'll, I'll deal with this in my present but the point is uh, it's an established scientific fact of what i'm calling super looming and it just reflects the um uh, the this this chart here so tim's tim's experience is well established and george's as well that's it hi uh, chris uh shiny man you are brother let's Let's bring this to, to a different point or follow the same path because I know you've been listening. Oh, it ever affects an auto level is going to affect your laser or anything else. Yeah, Tim, I don't, I don't understand your problem, Tim. It's, it's what's happening. It's what the atmosphere is doing. It's how it's being, light is being bent. It's not giving you, it's not, it's not trickery or anything. It's giving you what's happening in the real world. I'm confused as to why you think it's somehow bad. It's just telling you the atmosphere is weird. Uh, well, it's, you know... I don't know. It, it's opposite. It's unintuitive for me to think that it would be at the water level or below the water level. Uh, being better than the level of the device. That's asking. looming. That's all. That's just looming, Tim. I don't understand your problem. <laughs> I know these effects happen. You know, um, I have sunset uh, time lapses and stuff like that. Crazy stuff happens. Yeah, sunset's particularly tricky, as George found out. And on on that chart that I just showed you, it was a, it was in the late e uh, early evening that it went absolutely bonkers when it went. The scale went right up to the top to give you super looming conditions. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's what happens. I mean, it's what the atmosphere does. It's it's a wacky it's a thing. Way to check whether or not you have uh, turbulence in your atmosphere is by looking through at the atom light, doing some vertical angle measurements or through an auto level, tell you right away. All right, can't Whether wait. or not you're looking through uh, uh, refractive effects or you have minimal refractive effects. You see, you hear that? There's a further confirmation that they just use what they see to, to, to measure the refraction. So however much it's off from fitting the globe model, then that's the refraction for the day. Which, like I said, makes the model unfalsifiable. It's a crock of shit. I mean, they're from the horse's mouth. You know, that's more evidence right there. That's all they do. They use refraction. So, same thing with the surveyors. With the uh, geodetic surveyors, which ain't even the people who do the elevations. They're the ones who convert the elevations. They're the ones who do borders and, sh and shit like that. State borders. And, but they do, you know, some elevation. Like, with uh, mostly things that are... Uh, non-accessible like mountaintop shit like that you know they're uh big valleys i guess you know in cases like that but uh it's you know the topological surveys are done by uh, planar surveying it's like state to state and then join together to make the disco ball